Thanks for joining us on Shannon's Club TV, the program giving you the opportunity to relive Australian road and race histories and connect with other motoring enthusiasts. We've very much enjoyed your comments with each new edition of the show, so keep them coming as we release new episodes on the Shannon's Club website. Stay tuned as members of the Shannon's Auctions team join us for a road trip in our feature car and bring us the latest auction trends. Right now though, let's take a look at the car that redefined Australian buyer expectations overnight, the Valiant R&S series. By the late 1950s, Chrysler was already a pioneer in tough and light unitary construction for big cars. Its automatic transmissions were the best in the world. Chrysler's torsion bar front suspension combined with a unitary body's lower centre of gravity gave Chrysler's sharper handling. As an engineering-led company, Chrysler set benchmarks for engine performance and longevity, while Virgil Exner's fresh designs were adding extra sparkle. For 1960, Chrysler's new Valiant Compact was not just at the cutting edge of US models, it set new standards globally for a cheap family car, as it reflected all these advances. Even though it was already two years old on its 1962 local arrival, it had a huge impact on the local market. Mark, local racers must have been flocking to their Chrysler dealers in 1962 to get into a new Valiant with twice the power of an EK Holden and a lower profile body. Well, exactly. You've got to put it in that perspective. You know, compared to the wheezy local offerings from Holden and Ford, here was a car with a, an advanced six-cylinder engine, 3.7 litre, 145 brake horsepower. Now, the hot rodders, the racers, were taking these engines, boring them out to 3.9 litres, fitting triple carburetors, all sorts of hot gear, the top guys were actually doubling the standard horsepower and more. So suddenly this car became a real hot contender against the best British and American cars of the era. Amazing. The new R series was not just Australia's quickest family six. It offered a floor shift manual transmission and an advanced push button automatic transmission, which was a lighter and more efficient version of Chrysler's best large car automatics. Its slant six engine had a long stroke and a long inlet tract for V8 style torque, yet the bonnet line was low and sleek. Advanced structural design generated extra headroom with a lower roof line. Its distinctive styling was both prestigious and international. Inspired by Exner's collaborations with Italian design studio Gear, its four headlights, separate grille and extra body sculpture suggested a far more expensive car. The local R series sold out so quickly that the S-Series was rushed into local production. By the middle of 1963, it was all over, as this pioneering Valiant had already been replaced in the US. Australia was forced to follow. And just as the Americans had enjoyed it for three years, Australians would have been quite happy for it to stick around for at least another 18 months. Mark, you would be hard pressed to name another model that moved the bar so convincingly yet was gone before everyone had a chance to buy one. Yeah, and that's why it continued to be a force in local touring car racing for several years. Australian motorsport history has generally overlooked the achievements of some very fast R-Series Valiants during the early 1960s, which were often nipping at the heels of Bob Jane's all-conquering Jaguar Mark II and Norm Beachy's big block Chevy Impala. The new Valiant was a performance standout from its US launch in 1960. Its modern and powerful slant six engine, fitted with Chrysler's Hyperpack high performance option, allowed it to demolish Ford Falcon and Chevrolet Corvair rivals in special races held at Daytona Speedway that year for Detroit's all new compacts. Not surprisingly, the Valiant's inherent speed and toughness translated to Australian touring car racing. Drivers like Ern Abbott, Clem Smith and Des Leonard squeezed enormous power outputs from the 3.7 litre Slant 6, which made the three-speed R-Series Valiants serious contenders. Joe, given what Holden and Ford were offering at the time, yeah, this new Valiant with the cutting edge styling, the superior power, it must have caused a sensation when it hit local showrooms back in 1962. Well, in 1961, we had a whole lot of new cars mm. that uh, reached our shores. We had the Studebaker Lark now in local assembly. We had the Mercedes-Benz in local assembly. And this whole style of separate grill, imposing car, mm. all of a sudden for a small premium over a Holden, you could buy the Valiant, which had the same continental look. Massive engine with a huge amount of grunt. Yeah. 
it was just it just totally changed the Australian perspective and put everyone on notice. Just an amazing car at that time. Yeah, it really was. Although the Valiant Hemi Paces and RT Chargers are revered as Chrysler Australia's ultimate road and track cars, the most successful Valiant to compete in the Australian Touring Car Championship was in fact the R-Series. That historic achievement occurred at Malala Raceway in 1963 when Australia's premier tin top title was still being decided by a single race each year. On that occasion, Melbourne car dealer Ern Abbott and his R-Series Valiant came within one-tenth of a second of stealing pole position from Bob Jane's almighty Jaguar. In the 25-lap championship decider, Jane and Abbott tore away from the rest of the pack, with the Valiant driver keeping the leading Jaguar well within striking distance until his four-wheel drum brakes started to fade due to excessive heat. Abbott had to settle for a hard-fought second place, the best overall result for a Valiant in Australian Touring Car Championship history. Remember, you can build your own virtual garage on the Shannons Club website. My name's Rodney Hanson, and I'm one of the Shannon's Auction Sales Advisors down here at Warrigal Road in Cheltenham, Victoria. And this is a 1962 S-Series Valiant sedan. The ownership on this particular vehicle is quite interesting. It's been owned by the one family ownership since the 15th of November 1962. It was predominantly the mother's vehicle and she um, drove the, all the children to school and also on long family trips. The son then took ownership over in 1992 and he's since been the regular driver. But he can still remember those long family holidays and the trips to school when mum was behind the wheel. Chrysler Australia had no choice but to follow up the R-Series with the S-Series model. Now the S-Series sold to the end of the year and sold just over 10,000 units. The S-Series featured a revised grille, larger brakes and a larger fuel tank for the Australian conditions. Under the bonnet of the S-Series lies the ever popular Slant 6 engine which pushes out just over 145 brake horsepower. Some of the unique features on this particular car are the twin headlight grille, the external bonnet catch and the nice strips that run along the side of the vehicle and up over the rear fins. I guess the most unique feature is when you select the handbrake, it automatically puts the vehicle into neutral and then you cannot select a gear without releasing the handbrake first. Well sitting behind the wheel of this S-Series Valiant, you'll find that it's got plenty of power to keep up with the modern day traffic. It stops well with the upgraded brakes and it goes around corners quite nicely. The appeal of this model to the Valiant enthusiast is the fact that only just over 10,000 were produced in 1962, which makes this quite rare and also very collectible because it's one of the first of the two generation Valiants made in the country. Shannon's National Auctions Manager, Chris Borobin, joins us. Hi Chris. Hi Joe, how are you? Mark. Welcome to the show again mate. Yeah. The uh, Valiant R and S series, we're seeing quite a few of these sort of coming onto the market now. What, what trends are you picking up in terms of buyer and seller expectations at the moment? I think it's fair to say that a lot of them have actually been in the one ownership for a fairly long time. Yeah. So trying to pry those cars away from their original owners <laughs> is proving probably a bit difficult these days. But mm. I think with the increase in value of some of the other uh, Chrysler models, mm. um, you know, the R and S series have become in demand, and I think we're seeing a lot of uh, you know people in their forties and in, in, in probably you know early fifties that mm. are actually wanting to uh, acquire an R or S series. Um, and it's yeah, so there's a bit of a demand out there for it, but it's uh, it's a matter of uh, getting one at the right price. Yeah, yeah. Chris, the R and the S series has always enjoyed a special place in local history. It was a fairly radical car with a fantastic came out. looking car, yeah, and right. it never really disappeared. People mm. always liked them, and there's always somebody looking after one. Yep. What's different that, that's happening now? We're seeing a bit of interest in all early balance, not just mm. the R and the S series. Mm. Is that same significance being applied to the R and S series that, that used to be applied to it, or is or is it now more early Valiants? What, what's what's going on there? I think you know a lot of people refer to them as Mopars. You know, I yeah. think as we've uh, we've we've seen a big appreciation for Mopars in Australia in the last ten years, mm. and, and and I think you know all these crises have become uh, popular with uh, you know with, with Australians today, and. Uh, yeah, I think the R and S series always had a special place in our heart, mm -hmm. uh, and I think especially the styling, the front and the rear yeah. styling is very, very distinctive. Distinctive, yeah. 
I mean, parts supply must be pretty good for these cars. Generally pretty good, yeah. Mm. They're not too much of an issue. Um, mm. the, many parts can be obtained here, and if not, then they're, they're sourcing them out of us, yeah. uh, the US. Yeah. 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 So they're a good practical classic. Mm. Even though they look sensational, you can still drive them, take the family out, and go to a display. And Chrysler clubs are very big on displays. Very big, absolutely. Just yeah. a perfect car. It is. It's a, it's a good family car, good club car, good following. Well, thanks, Chris. And remember, you can keep up to date with all the latest auction news on the Shannon's Club website. If you like the competition images of the Valiant R series from the show, you'll find them all at autopix.com.au. I guess when we look at this car in a historical context, Joe, what we can't forget is this thing really awakened the sleeping giant, which was General Motors Holden. This car really rattled the market leader, didn't it? It certainly did, mm. and you can see they had to intervene with the EJ. Mm. They restyled the EH, and you can see that they, they were totally rattled over the HD. Mm. They really didn't know what to sort of put up against the Valiant, mm. and it never happened before, and it changed the whole Australian market from then on. Sure did. We hope you enjoyed this look at the game changer from Chrysler Australia when they really got it right. And we'll catch you next time on Shannon's Club TV.